this is why you don't, this is why I'm hot, this is why you don't listen to black melanated ideologues. You've got these uh, black fake conservatives, because if you're melanated in America and you're conservative, you're just living a delusion, because black power is considered a liberal ideal. And unless you're reconciling that daily, where the only person I know who does that is uh, Q, maybe Sean James to an to an extent, um, but it takes a lot of reconciliation because of how twisted political ideologies are in the United States. You know this is. Uh, I made a video. And thankfully, I've only ran into one attack on this channel. Because now I'm saving all my videos. I got a huge hard drive. If my channel gets flagged down because I'm a little controversial and, and touchy for some people, if it gets flagged down, it gets flagged down. I got a backup, so I'm not really concerned about that. But I did make a video, and I actually backed this up. So here's a little I told you so that running the risk of making the word liberal, which I would say is just it's just a whatever goes down term. It doesn't really mean anything in America either. You got a lot of fake liberals. You know, like I said, if black power is liberalism in America, what the hell is liberalism in America? It's just it's um, whatever people say it is, you know, because really, if you want to talk about political ideologies, a um, duality of liberal and conservative really doesn't make much sense. That's way too simple. It's like run and shoot versus three yards in a cloud of dust. I think that's what it's called. It wouldn't be two yards because that's not making it. So three yards in a cloud of dust, make the refs spot the ball. That's way too simple for American politics or any nation's politics where I don't even know if if you want to talk for the uh, evolution heads. If we was at one point living basic like like the orangutans, if it, it might have been too simple then. So it just becomes a political tool to do with as you will. And I said, don't listen to people who, who call themselves conservatives, especially melanated, because they're jumping through too many mental hoops for anything to make sense anyway. And it just becomes kind of like a click where we going to say some stuff and we'll believe some stuff. And even though it makes us feel a certain type of way, maybe this isn't right. It's kind of that collective group think. And the, how this applies to the NFL, if you listen to them. Well, first, let me let me tell you what I warned. I, I said that. You need to get into local politics as far and when I say local politics, I'm talking social justice warrior meetings at the grassroots level. And as long as you have these people who call themselves conservatives talking about social just, justice warriors like uh, Ashkenazi Jews spawn them in a medical experiment and, and they will suck your blood behind closed doors. You're not there to make the decisions that you're more qualified to make than they. And the reason why they talk like this, they don't want to tell you to get involved in politics. And this is specifically to melanated men, especially. I won't say specifically, I'll say especially because it's to it's to anybody with some common sense. But from the point of view of melanated men, if you're not there, let me show you a picture. I'm going to throw a picture up of Maine, state of Maine's Black Lives Matter group, when they all got arrested for some shit. I've looked at this picture, it's been a few days ago, I'm not even looking at it now. I don't know if there's any uh, melanated men in that at all. So when I do solution videos, when I talk about solutions and family issues, anything that's from a male perspective isn't going to have anything behind it. I said, you have to get into these groups, get into them and go in there quiet and willing to learn. And I also, I don't know if I said this, but I want to add this. I even heard this from uh, 
someone like who's not really classified as a conservative, you know, and I'm all of these are loaded words that don't really mean a damn thing other than part of the clique is Dr. Umar Johnson. He does the same thing, too. He makes it seem like the Ashkenazi Jews have some kind of of um, magical bond over people that you can't go in there and and make your argument and move the political agenda. And in a sense, I'm the card is before the horse because I'm I'm going to go into Black Power soon. As a matter of fact, I've got some stuff on it. I'm just trying to shorten it and make it easier to digest for people. But let's say you want black power. You ain't so concerned about, you know, what kind of um, transsexual bathrooms. Like, that That doesn't mean anything to you. You don't care about the goddamn bathrooms. You're interested in black power. You go in there. When it comes to black issues, you, they're going to listen to you. You're going to get platformed. Not necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to steer the money, but that's the first step to it. It can't just be you if you're talking money, because that's going to, most of the time, that's going to come up for a vote. But you can change votes. A lot of times there's going to be people who are, who are like, okay, I'm listening to the best thing. A convincing person like Dr. Umar Johnson has no fear. He should be a social justice warrior. He should be there every night in as many pockets as he can find. Because compared to most of them, he's a celebrity. You know, the white dudes will want his autograph before they try to uh, re-steer the conversation to whatever. You have a platform in these. Go to them. Because that's where the money is going to go. And when it comes to changing laws, that's... That's the grassroots level. That's where it starts. Little pockets of community organizers, a.k.a. social justice warriors. You know, people who, if they could, fly and shoot beams out of their eyes, they'd be superheroes, but they can't. So the best thing they can be is social justice warriors. A lot of them broke. They ain't trying to make no money off of it. They realize that there's nobody in, in black power. You got to be hella excellent. You know, with some 1804 shit. Otherwise, there's no money in black power. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is it was the black conservatives. I mean, there's not all of them. So they kind of have different levels. But man, there's what one, one dude. I might put his fi- uh, picture up if I can find it. I mean, this guy was, he had that, oh, what are you doing? Mass was not, he was just so timid over the NFL players bending knee. Just it was I, I watched it for the comedy. He was, just, he was almost half embarrassed by it. He was petrified by it. He was just a bitch. And on the world stage no less. And I'm like and then the reason why I say you also gotta look at the mother political ideologies. I'm gonna do something on the root. I've been stirred on the root. I've already, actually, I've already gone in on the route when I talked about um, how black media did not report King Tut's ancestry test. I was hardest on the route than anybody because I was, and I'm still seeing this with the route. They, they're way too easy with that hotep nonsense. And there's something behind that. They would will, they are willing, they would make this trade when it comes to ancient Egypt. They don't give a damn about ancient Egypt to the point where I think they would make the trade. They would go along, okay, we'll give you behind closed doors, we'll give you Caucasoid Egypt. Thank you, Johann Blumenblock. <laughs> Shit, dude. I'm like, man, you can't have, you cannot take something that was invented in the 19th century. And back label some stuff, you know, before Christ. Come on now, be, you know. But that's just me. And anyhow, I'm seeing that the anti-African shit in the root is is not rational. And they're the main people going along with these fake pictures of Libyan slavery, them and gravity. So you gotta. The ideologue is not the business. Don't fuck with the ideologue. Period. 
But considering that black power is liberal in America, imagine the black conservative. So now you got these black conservatives don't want to, didn't say anything about, you know, we're not trying to push, let's get out, let's protest, let's protest, let's protest. Then they, the NFL is like, okay, how, when are you going to stop? All right. You, you just made it this, you bend the knee or whatever. We'll put $81 million to, uh, to groups that are, that are doing something uh, or trying to do something because I ain't succeeding about, uh, police brutality. You know, who that buddy's going to go to. You know who, who those groups are? It's just what the people I was talking about. It's the social justice warrior groups. Had you been there, and I, I said uh, this time last year, get into these groups. Make relationships. Get into these groups in number. Take them over smoothly. Because now, they're, a lot of these groups, man, they, they're going to get this money and it's going to hit them flat footed. This $80 million, $80 million is going to go to a, a mixture of groups. Some of them are going to be like that picture in Maine. Like you're going to have some Muslim women from Somalia <laughs> and, and you gotta have some ratchet ass white chicks thinking they go meet brothers if they go to the, if they're in Black Lives Matter. I'm seeing a little bit of that. That and then they get there, they're like, where are the brothers at? They didn't want to come because Ganu and and uh Esu and and all of them, you know, and the idiomites and all you know Spooky shit scares them, but really, it's just an excuse because they'd rather stay home and play video games. I feel them, but you gotta go. You gotta go, because now, that $81 million, I'm, I'm not sure of the competence behind it. And that money wouldn't even be there if you listen to the black conservatives. Stand up! Don't, don't do nothing. Nah, well... I'm kind of in between. I'm like, to me, it's not that big of a deal. If you can cut a, a million, eighty million dollar deal, then you, you you take that extra eighty million dollars, and you put it to whatever to to end uh, this race soldiering. And that's the whole thing. It all comes down to how you punish them. This is why I need to get into the solutions because to me, there's only four. Uh, solutions when it comes to black power. There's only four stimulants. And I'm not putting uh, police brutality in the top four. And and there's more than four, but I'm kind of in that, that whole thing where it has to be simple. It has to be God, family, football. So that's it today. I just wanted to make that point that I was the one saying infiltrate these places because it's not a lot of money. That $81 million here, tither, yay. After people have, have um, after a layer of corruption, that $81 million is probably going to be like 15. And, but that's still resources to address an issue that is real. I'm not saying, just because I'm saying it's not top four doesn't mean I don't think it's real. It's very real. It's it's kind of like homosexuality. I wouldn't put that top four, but it's distraction at the very least. People are, are um, there's a, a call to talk about it and to spend time on it. So let's address it, wipe it away. And I'm not seeing how this uh, social justice warrior click does it not seeing it uh, that's why I said infiltrate them infiltrate them and educate them because uh, I don't know uh, I I see that money it's going to be a big gender war argument over we got all this money for shit that only has something to do with men and you know and it's 
it's going to smell when instead, if you're there, you know where what, what you got to do with the money. It's all about punishing them. And that's all about changing laws. And that's all about grassroots shit. Getting, that's all about holding um, clipboards saying, will you, you, you know, we, will you sign this so we can put this on the law? You have to do it here, here, and to do it on a national level. I don't even know the details in that. But I know it's doable. I actually did it. I did it, but it, it was 10 years, more than 10 years ago. It was like 15 years ago. And it wasn't like I was driving all over the country, but it was a national initiative. So it's doable. Say, so, oh, I wanted to throw a quick addendum in and add this, because I, I, I got off track when I was talking about the root and bravity. I'm seeing it with bravity. Maybe I'm not even seeing it with the root. I know for, I know I'm seeing it with bravity. They tweet it and, and it's not just bravity though, but it was tweeted about how these NFL players are selling out for the $81 million. This is a problem I see with the other end of the political ideology spectrum, the people that are labeled as, as liberals. They would rather have a protest than $81 million. A point in protesting is so you get the goddamn $81 million. Now it's what you do with it. Because if it was $81 million for breast cancer, would they call them sellouts? Or would they say they're making a strategic move to get money to raise, uh, to deal, deal with something? Is there being, they're going for a solution. Because protesting all the time, just for protesting, how, what are you selling out? You protest for a solution. My thing is, what happens with that money? And that's why I said, don't listen to ideologues. Ideologues are driven by the click. They're not driven by logic or thought. You know, there are some exceptions. But usually they are, they're constantly reconciling and saying why they're the exception. So you know what page they're on. It works. So good night for people who are watching this at night. Good day for people who are watching this during the day.